Hello, friends. Welcome to the Ocean Tribe Hangout. So as you guys know, we used to do Instagram Lives, and these Instagram Lives have moved on to this new place where we've got a sitting weekly podcast with amazing humans from across the world that are impacting the ocean space and are bringing the much needed diversity when we talk about diverse oceans and conservation and, you know, voices for the ocean. And I think it's so amazing uh, to have Ocean Martina here. She is a scuba diving instructor, but she's also a woman actively working in conservation. She is an environmental journalism journalist who has just come out with her first film and I'm excited for us to chat about that too but just a whole world where this human is a voice for the ocean and she is using it as a platform to bring everybody on board and see how we can expand this whole idea of making the ocean accessible to everyone but also so that it belongs to everyone. Welcome to the Ocean Tribe Hangout, Martina. Thank you so much for the introduction. <laughs> That's such a nice description. <laughs> How are you? Thanks for the invitation. I, oh, I'm, I, I'm beautiful. Part one, tell us where you are. Tell us what it's like. Uh, tell us what you see right now. So right now I'm in Baja, California. Um, this is not where I live, but I came and I stayed for a couple of months. Uh, this place is just amazing. I literally fell in love with the ocean here. I mean, I was already in love, but I fell even more. There's like sea lions, sharks everywhere. The shark is like my favorite animal, uh, my favorite <laughs> ocean creator. Um, there's orcas and there's dolphins. It's just like insane. <laughs> I came here to film another documentary actually, but for Corona, because I'm in free range humans, yeah. just like you. And yeah, yeah, so I came here to film and they were like, okay, it's like one week of filming. So I was like, wait a minute, maybe can you just like get my ticket back a couple of months later? And I just want to explore the ocean. And yeah, I just stay because this, this place is amazing. <laughs> so I'm learning a lot here. I love, I love this so much. So I've heard a lot about that place in California and I'm excited to see what you're going to give us at the end of this. Yeah, trip. it's, it's amazing. Actually. Yeah. It's. Baja California is like in, in Mexico and it's, it's just like, I've never crossed so many things as a diver in my bucket list in just two weeks. <laughs> it's like bull sharks, oh. like, it's just like sharks everywhere. It's, it's beautiful. I, I, rec I highly recommend everyone to come here. So <laughs> yes, that's definitely going to happen. But before I get distracted, I love to ask this question. What is your thing? What, what, what is your happiness maker, your purpose bringer? The one thing that you wake up in the morning and you think, yes, that's why I'm doing this life. What is your yeah, thing? Yeah, so my thing is, let's say my purpose is to give the ocean a voice. Um, and I discovered um, a couple of years ago, I can tell you exactly the moment because I remember it. <laughs> and it was... So I was born far away from the ocean. I studied social communications because I really liked uh, writing and doing journalism. And then I decided to travel just to, you know, when I finished, just to have a year for myself, working as a backpacker and finding myself. And then just like I went scuba diving in that trip. I remember I did like one year off in Australia, or well, not off because I was working, but just not off my career. And then I saved some money and make it to Thailand. And I remember the first time I dive, I was like, what? what nobody told me about this amazing world, you know, because I never even thought about the chance of maybe, you know, studying marine biology. It's just because I was so far from the ocean. Yeah. It was never, never an option. I always said, like, when I was yeah. young, I wanted to be like a dolphin trainer because I didn't know how bad it was for the dolphins, of course. But I like to think, okay, in my mind, I already was in love with the ocean. I Then I just forgot, you know, did what people expected from your society expected for me study like you know i got a boyfriend do like all the life i was supposed to do and then i dive and i was like what no 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 like i will never forget this and i felt that day like yeah. i had the ocean forever and i started to explore it so mm -hmm. i didn't discover my purpose in that moment but that was like a big beginning because i tried to use all my savings to explore as much of that like wonderful world that i didn't know as i can and why wow. I found a job, um, was like an exchange. So they will teach me diving and I will work for them in Mexico, actually, but in Playa del Carmen, I found it online. So when I finished my year traveling, I was like, okay, I saved some money. You know, Mexico is not that expensive. 
if you live in Australia and you save some money and I could do that exchange. So I didn't need a lot of money actually. And I went there and there was like one time I went to, in my day off to do the whale shark uh, experience. And I, it was just from my diet shop. So I was like, okay, I just do this on my day off. And I remember I was there and the captain was like, okay, one, two, three, jump. And I remember I jumped and I felt, how do you explain? You know, when you are like standing in the top of a mountain and you just feel like the universe yeah. is just huge and you're a tiny little spot like in this war and then your problems wow. maybe are not that big as you thought they were. So I was feeling the same, but yeah. with like, a sea animal, like a sea creator, you know, because the, the whale shark is the biggest fish in the ocean and it can be an, wow. until 14 meters. So I was right there feeling super <laughs> tiny and little. And all my life, they oh. teach me, like, they told me like, okay, you know, this is the human and all the nature is made for the human. And I was like, there's no way, like I can be superior to this, this <laughs> creator. First is huge. Second, I'm just like, I look like a, a little insect next to it, you know? And third, like <laughs> this, this creator is super nice. He's aware that I'm right next to him. And like, we are just oh. coexisting, you know? So that was like a really important moment because it changed completely my way of understanding nature. And then it just started me, like, it made me think like, how come we being so tiny and little next to, you know, the ocean creators or like, sorry, next to the sea life, can we be doing such a big damage to the ocean? Like it just, it just made no mm. sense. So I was like, all right, mm. maybe it's because people didn't have the time to fall in love with the ocean. Like I'm doing, you know, they haven't lived this experience or they, they don't have the chance to yeah. experience this time of like, you know, being there out there in the ocean, just seeing all this amazing sea life in their own like habit, you know, just like swimming in the ocean. And I was like, well, maybe I can start using my career as a journalist to make people connect with the sea, to make people fall in love with the ocean, because that's exactly what happened to me. I fell in love with the ocean and then I changed so many habits. And then I started, you know, being aware of plastic, being aware of what can I do to help the sea? Uh, what should I stop eating? You know, so many things change until I, I, I get to connect with that world. So it kind of was my purpose. Yeah. I'm like, I want to make people fall in love with the sea. Before I told wow. them what they shouldn't do, like, I want to make sure they know how amazing this word is, because if they know it, I'm sure like wow. they will, they will, it's impossible. If you know the ocean and how amazing it is, it's kind of impossible that you don't want to protect it. Like you, you must be insane if you tell me you don't care about it because it's just so beautiful. And yeah, that's how it started. <laughs> I started volunteer for a lot of so media. So I started like creating content and just like you do and getting more into diving and trying to mix my both passions yeah. and here I am. <laughs> so I love the story so much because one, you come from this faraway place and you discover this ocean. But two, I always say it's amazing how we are taught that we humans are at the high point of, of existence. And then you go into the sea and you say, there's no way who's someone's lying yeah. to us. There is no way. The ocean is so massive. And then you come across a whale shark, you know, the first and only time that I saw a whale shark, it was a baby whale shark. And it was probably four meters long. And that was already very long, right? So the idea that it can be 10 meters or 14 meters is just wild. And you think, you know, someone's been lying to us. We're not the highest level, but what does it mean for us to recognize the life that lives in the ocean as, you know, it's majestic in its own way. We have work to do. And what does it mean to protect it? One. Two, that ocean connection, you know, you saying, how do I help people be able to see and experience this so that they can care for it? I always say this. I say it all the time. People cannot care for what they've never seen before. They need to see it in order to experience it, fall in love with it, and then protect exactly. it. It almost like goes, you know, before you decide that you're going to preach to anyone, you need to make it accessible. and. Um, and I'm with you in that that's when you stop and you say, and for me, my journey with starting my conservation work, it was not immediate. Finding the ocean and the conservation, they did not come at the same time because I don't know. I almost felt like conservation always belonged over there to those people. 
you know, it never felt like it could be mine. And then realizing that when I make this change and this change and this change, I'm also an ocean conservationist and I have work to do. And what does it mean to help other people do that same work with me? Do you know what I yeah, mean? Exactly. Like I, I totally feel you. And for me, it's the same. Like, I don't, I don't want to think that, you know, somebody was lying to me or, or that humanity is evil. I, yeah. I like to feel like they just don't know because we are so used yeah. to, especially like now that, you know, maybe now with pandemic, I'm working online, it's changing a little bit, but normally, you know, people have to live in the city to find a job and, you know, to make a living and yeah, like I don't judge anyone because I was one of those. And then you just are so disconnected yeah. to the ocean. So people forget that if they throw that yeah. cigarette there, it will end it up in the river and the river will connect to the ocean. And immediately like that will hurt a lot uh, of nature, you know, yeah. but we just forget about it because we are in such a, like a super fast speed uh, working and just like never stopping to observe and connect. So yeah, like that, I was like, this is my purpose. This is what I want to do. Like, I love writing. I love uh, taking pictures, taking videos. Like, I think I'm, I can do storytelling. Yeah. I want to tell these stories from the ocean. And and that was just yeah. the first one. Exactly what you were saying, like, um, that it makes you question, what do I know and what do I not? You know, the ocean opens you like wow. a lot of, or let's say, I would like to say it puts your ego aside. Like, for me, at least, it just made me realize I don't know anything, like, nothing is sure. And I'm not sure if people that teach me some things were quite right. Like maybe in a lot of things, yes. And yeah. I'm very grateful for my education, but maybe in some other things they were not. And I'm going to discover that because yeah. like, I'm, I'm an explorer yeah. as a diver and I'm, I'm very curious and I love to learn. And I'm sure like yeah. I can start, you know, making my chain and, and putting my seat there. As you said, before you realize you're doing something for it, because it's so amazing that y you will just not stay with yeah. your hands uh, you know, just watching. And then that's also something that, you know, made me do my first documentary about shark conservation because our, it was exactly the same. The first time I ever saw a shark, you know, I was expecting the shark just to come to me and, and that didn't happen. So <laughs> I was like, wait, wait a minute. Like, is this, is this chill? Yeah. Like, is this okay? And I remember exactly the first encounter I had with a shark because I was, I was there scuba diving. I was with, um, you know, it was in this internship as well. And they sent me with the photographer because there was no space in the boat. So uh, me and the photographer were diving, but of course he was the under underwater camera and he was just taking pictures all around. He was not like taking care yeah. exactly of me because I was supposed, you know, to be like an intern, not a customer. So I started, you know, looking all around and right I'm very curious. And then I saw like these two divers yeah. observing, a, you know, an ocean creator as the animal. Uh, super, super, like, deeply. And I was like, what is that? And I remember I saw, like, the, the dorsal fin, and I thought, this is beautiful. I saw how the shark was moving. I was like, this is actually, like, fancy. I thought it was a fancy animal. And I just stayed there. <laughs> the two divers left. I remember I was right there with the shark. I lost the underwater camera, but then he found me. So I have that moment recorded. I mean, and the shark swim a little bit, you oh. know, we dive together. And I remember as soon as the dive finished, we went all up and I asked the divers, like, was that really a shark? And people started laughing. Like, what do you mean that yeah. was a shark? Like, you were just diving with him for like 10 minutes. And I was like, well, I always yeah. read that sharks will bite me. So I was not quite sure if that was a yeah. shark, you know? And I was like, okay, another thing, you know, like, and then I started reading about them because I got curious. I feel like when you become a diver, you become an explorer immediately. So I started reading about it and I was yeah. like, oh, we're actually doing a lot of damage to the, to the sharks. They are really important in the ocean. Like we need them to have a healthy ocean. And because of this fear we create with our storytelling, you know, they're suffering a lot. They have a terrible reputation. And yeah. I was like, okay, maybe I need to do the other storytelling. Maybe I need to tell good stories about sharks to change this. And it just yes. like all these causes just, just find you. It's not that I look at them. It's just yeah. so many things that to be told and, and yeah, like that, I became very passionate about it. <laughs> Yo, that's, that, that's actually so true. But I'm going to actually pause before I go into your film work with the sharks. And I'm going to ask you this question. Did you know how to swim when you got to Thailand and had your experience when you were learning oh, yeah, yeah. Um, how to I scuba knew. dive? Did you, did you grow up in a big swimming community? Um, were you comfortable in the ocean? 
Well, no, the closest ocean from home was six hours. So I will see it on summer when, when my mom and my dad will take me on holidays. And we didn't like, yeah. own a swimming pool, but my grandparents have one. And I, I learned there and I did some swimming lessons. Like my family loved swimming. Like my, my dad, even if we didn't yeah. live in the ocean, he, I felt like he, I felt like all this passion about the ocean, it came from him, but he just didn't live next to it. Yeah. So I, I learned. Wow. And I was always pretty good at, at the water, you know, like, but just, just because it, I don't know, it's not because I had a lot of experience, just because it was natural to me. Uh, so yeah, I, I was never too scared of, of it, but I, I know that you learned, uh, older, right? Like I saw, you said it older, sorry. I, I don't, I don't know if my English is not <laughs> yes. good. Just correct me anytime. You're uh, right. I saw your video and I was like, wow, this is so cool that she learned like later, you know, and, and you're doing what you're doing. Yeah. It's, it's never too late, right? It's never too late. It's, it's never too late. And that's the beautiful thing that you can actually, you know, and a lot of people believe that you have to be this amazing swimmer and maybe even an Olympic swimmer in order to go and explore the ocean. But then you realize that you could come on a snorkel trip, that you don't need to be like, this amazing swimmer, you could just come on a snorkel trip because seeing beneath the surface is the most important thing. And then you can start scuba diving and free diving and doing the work to explore deeper. But snorkeling is a powerful tool as well. And so I want to ask you, what does conservation mean to you? And does representation matter when we talk about conservation, ocean conservation? Okay. Um, let me think about the answers. <laughs> now I would say <laughs> conservation for me is to, to protect what we all need to survive and be aware of it. You know, I feel like times are changing and we were doing a lot of things wrong because we thought everything we needed was just like money, you know, and like have all these physical things, but we are actually like realizing that what we need is like a healthy planet. So I feel like yeah. conservation is the right thing to do if we want to survive, survive as species. I don't know if that is too extreme, but like that's, that's what I feel. And then to be a conservationist, you have to be an ex like an explorer first, indeed, like what, what we are, like curiosity tells, takes you there. And then once you see how beautiful nature it is and you know how this what you're telling like once you see the ocean i will say you are um yes or yes a conservationist because it's gonna blow your mind and it's gonna be life changing and i'm sure nobody will see all that beauty and say i don't want to protect it and then the more you get to know it yeah. you're like okay it's not just because it's beautiful it's because i need it to survive like we're all connected you know so it it definitely changed all your point of view. This is what we were telling, like it will make you realize it's not all, ma all made for the human. We're actually in an ecosystem and we all need from each other and there's an order and we need to respect that. Um, and I would yeah. say that spending a lot of time in silence diving, it's, it's a beautiful therapy to understand that we're just a tiny little part of this world. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. And then, the other question that you said about representation, I feel representation is, is super important, but first of all, and you know, I don't want to talk about like this, but I already told you, I've been developing this program to make like indigenous women connect with the ocean in Panama, where I was living in this um, island in the archipelago. And the reason I did it was not just because I was like, I want more women in the ocean. It was that, but it's more like, this is so beautiful that you can't be missing this. And I was just like, I want yeah. everyone to enjoy this as much as I, I am enjoying it. And there's, you know, there's no owners in the ocean. This is right there for all of us. So you should come and enjoy this as much as I'm enjoying it. And, you know, when I was, when I was, that's exactly what I started doing this about this program about like, it's called Women of the Ocean. So this community that I'm doing online for women, it started in a, yeah. um, it started in a field, you know, I don't know how to say it. Like I started doing in an environmental program in the island. It was a physical encounter at the beginning because I could see where I was living. I was the, you know, it was like more of four or five scuba diving girls and none of them was local. I'm from Argentina and this is Panama. 
So I was like, all my Panamanian friends, because I made a lot of local friends living there, they were like, ah, oh, so you dive? Yes. And they were like, I don't know how to swim. I'm like, this is your island. And I'm enjoying all this beauty and yes. you're missing it. No, 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 no. We need to change this. You know, it's just like, mm. and, and they were telling me all the time, like, no, like my mom didn't allow me when I was young or like, you know, it's just like a kid's thing or they were scared of sharks. So they w- wouldn't let me. So I was like, all right, I need to create a space just for them not because i want to exclude the guys just because i want them to feel comfortable first and you need to go little by little just exactly what you're talking about okay first go snorkeling so it was the same first we did some games in the ocean so they felt safe then we did some stand-up paddling you know little by little and now they surf and now like yeah then you think what the ocean can give you to you know like if girls connecting the ocean in a place that lives on tourism there's a lot of opportunities because they can be taxi drivers, they can be uh, ecotourism guides, they can be surf instructors, they can be scuba diving instructors. Yeah. So something more than just, you know, if not, if you live in a touristy place, their options are reduced to cook and cleaning, which is nothing wrong with that's what they want to do. But I don't want them yeah. to be surrounded by ocean and miss all these opportunities. They can even get their own food if they want, you know, and that is just like empowers them. So I feel yeah. the ocean is a field of opportunities and a beautiful place and no one should yeah. miss it. <laughs> I, I love this vision so much because it's so powerful. And I say it's powerful because in many places where you go, the indigenous people don't have access to the ocean for many reasons. It could be the fact that you grow up not believing, you know, being told that you can't go to the ocean or there's the stories of what lives in the ocean or you just don't have access. You don't have the tools. You don't have the wetsuit. You don't have a surfing board and no one has taught you. But then everyone comes from outside to enjoy this beautiful place. Like you said, you know, there's all of us enjoying this ocean and the people of the place don't know what lives under there. You know, and I think for me, that's probably like my biggest work because I always say when we do conservation, wherever it is that we go, it needs to belong to that community too. Yeah. You know, we, we can come and we can say, oh, look, you know, we should pick up plastic and we should do all of this and we should do all of this, but it needs to belong to the community as much as it belongs to you or to whoever is coming to do that work, because then you know that its people will protect it, not for you, but for them. And when, when, when the community takes ownership, everything changes because then the children grow up and they understand why they need to protect it. And it opens up new opportunities. Like you said, beautifully in tourism to do more as well. You know, and I think that is so powerful. So well done to you. Well done to you. I, I, love, I agree. Just, I love this work. I agree totally. Like it, it's so important. And, <laughs> and yeah, also like, you know, as divers, we travel a lot because we, we find jobs and stuff and then, then you leave. So you want to make sure somebody's there and that, that things keep going. It was just not an experience you do because that again, will, that will be ego. Like yeah. if you just want to make a program and keep it for yourself, that's just ego. So you need those things to keep working and. I, I totally agree with you. And yeah, I, I admire your job a lot. And I think you're doing a really great thing. So thank you so much for your job as well. Oh, man. Thank you. Okay, hold on. You have to tell me why woman. So I know you said, you know, you, you, you want to get to everyone, but maybe start little by little. But there's a few projects that you're running. And at the first and foremost of it is woman. Is there a reason why you've decided to go with woman um, first? I think it was first because of what I told you, where the place I was living, I had a lot of, first I was at the beginning, I was the only girl at the dye shop <laughs> and I, I will get uh, bored. Like it's good. I love my guy friends and I, I don't want to say I get bored. Like I love them. They are my brothers, but there was moments I was like, I wish I had some girls here, you know, like, and, and yeah, like it was most of them guys. And I feel you know, every time I could see a girl would tell me like, I don't know how to swim, you know, because I would be like maybe working in a dye shop and there there was like a coffee shop and the girl from the coffee shop was like, ah, it's so mm-hmm. cool that you do this. I'm like, dude, like you were born here. Let's do it. Let's go tomorrow. Like I teach you, you know, and yeah. then, then all these little girls, I, I love surfing as well. And I will go surfing and I will see all these little guys and no, 
no yeah. guy, no girls. So I'm like, these girls need to surf as well, you know? And then you see them yeah. um, on the ocean, all dressed up. It's like super hot weather and not feeling, you know, comfortable. So I was like, I need to change this. And, you know, because this, the same yeah. you say, like, this place is not just for me. And then I yeah. think that's one of the reasons, but I would say there's a second reason that is just of what scuba diving changed me as a woman and like kind of set me yeah. free in so many social pressures. Like I was, I, I told you, I studied social communications because I, I really like it writing, but my first, you know, my first jobs were always like in marketing and, you know, marketing, like I, I love, like you can, you can apply it in a really good way, but also if you have, there's also can be like super superficial sometimes. And I remember I was working in like the fashion world and that is something completely different of what I do that. And there was so many yeah. social pressures, you know, and just in my environment in the city, like, you know, it's not that somebody will come and just tell me what to do, but, but you will just feel them and you will see all these girls trying to be perfect. And we are yeah. not perfect. It's just impossible. <laughs> and we are perfect in our no, own way, but not. we are not in the standard that people expect us to be perfect because we're just human. We're real mm -hmm. women perfectly in our way. Right. Yeah. And when I started to learn diving and maybe I told you there was no many diving girls, but there was a lot of, you know, surfer girls I met there in the island or girls that love the sea. And, and, you know, I started yeah. being, how cool is that we all, don't need to have our hair all straight or we don't need to have our legs perfectly waxed, you know, like, yeah, we have some hair, like this is real. I'm sorry. And I dive every day yeah. and I couldn't shave this morning. <laughs> I hope people can survive yeah. after this and nobody will judge me. <laughs> and then you start realizing how good it is to have muscles because you need to pick up tanks. You need to get up to the boat and maybe there's no leather and you need to help someone and you need to be strong and you cannot be super tiny yeah. and skinny and you know, just bones because we need, and I start appreciating my body, you know, my, my bigger legs that I have as a Latin woman and I'm becoming friendly with them. You know, I was like, okay, I kind of like this. Like I need these legs. I need this body. I don't need to sure. be perfect. And just when you are right there under the ocean, I feel it's just nature and you. And as we say, you're part of nature and as part of nature, you're just a real thing, not just a product from society. And that just changed so much my perspective. That just put me together with so many powerful women that I admire and natural and real. And I just thought like, this is, oh. I want this in the world. Like I want girls to know they can just oh. be like that. And some girls maybe will not find it with diving. Maybe they are just lucky and, you know, yeah. they, they can they can find it in other sports or they can just be like that. But I know also a lot of girls that suffer that, um, especially the closest yeah. we are to, you know, capitalism. And, and I yeah. want to expand that to the world. And I, I felt like I want to tell girls that they can. And sometimes the diving industry is more like, yeah. like a guy's thing. It's changing more and more, but it still have, you know, that idea. So, you know, I, I like to, to inspire other girls to show them that they can do it. They can live the life that they want. Because if I could, and I was a girl from the city, why wouldn't they? There's no difference between me and them. And I know it made my yeah. life better. So if I can help someone to make their life better too, I will do it. <laughs> I love that so much. You've said, you've said so much that is important, especially in today's age. Girls understanding that their bodies are beautiful just as they are, and it's okay to look like a real <laughs> woman, you know? And, and I love you saying that, you know, there's this whole expectation in society around how women should look and how women should behave and what does it mean to start embracing your own body as it changes as you're diving but also making room for women's bodies to be normal wherever it is that they find themselves whether they are small whether they are big whether they are masculine whether you know and the idea that we're not just these pretty things we are we are these amazing woman doing big things in these incredible bodies and that all of our bodies are perfect you know and I love that because I feel like the world needs that message it needs especially the younger girls growing up I think they need that that reminder that they are beautiful as they are and that the only standard is not the skinny standard there's many standards and yeah I don't I think that's so I totally powerful. agree and like yeah like it's 
I mean, if, if they're skinny and they like being skinny, that's all good. But maybe you were not born skinny yeah. and like you, you can be however you want and just, just more like being natural. You know, when you're in the ocean, you, you're not like yeah. with makeup on your hair. It's not like, you know, perfect and stuff, but it's like you ended up yeah. loving your salty hair and you ended up loving your comfy clothes. And, and you know, that for me was like a release and I, I, I want to yeah. create a, a place for women that they can feel like that as well. Um, yeah. so and then like also while diving, I met so many powerful women and doing so many good things. And I think it's always good to learn from each other and inspire each other. And, and I just love it. You know, I, I don't know. I have passion yeah. for it. And, and yeah, like I also love my guy friends, but I feel we need to create this space in this moment to expand this. And yeah, like uh, that's what I try to do. <laughs> I, I I just, I love everything that you've said. And I don't know if you've ever seen like my posts every so often, you know, you spoke about your, your thicker thighs and perhaps curvier body. I always say the world needs to see more thick thighs underwater. <laughs> I say it all the time. I didn't read and, that. That's and it's good. Because my, you know, my, my, my build is that I've got, I've got, I've got thighs and, but it's also just because it's how my body is built. And so I always say the world needs more buns and thighs <laughs> that are thicker and fatter underwater because it makes, it makes room for everyone to believe that their bodies are enough. And even with my journey as a water person, you know, when I look at these bikinis that I've looked at and I think, I don't know if the world is ready for this. And then I wear it anyway, <laughs> right? And I buy it and I wear I it. it. And I freak myself out and then I absolutely enjoy it. And everyone comes back and says, Zandi, you're normalizing my thick thighs. And I said, you know, and, and being afraid and doing it anyway, when we liberate ourselves, we allow the people around us to be liberated too, you know, with our little bikinis and our big bikinis and just, you know, our legs and our bodies. And, and it's just so all to say, yay. <laughs> yeah. And I feel it's just... The, the physical way, just like you said, but also um, there's a lot of roles that sometimes society still expects of women that diving is pretty revolutionary yeah. in that. And I think it's like a good, yeah. play, a good place, a good to women to understand that, you know, like there's nothing wrong if you just, you know, you, you want to be a housewife, there's nothing wrong with that. But if you want to, you know, be in nature or like get dirty or like, you know, you're, yeah. you're just not that type yeah. of girl that was born to you know, does not enjoy going to a hairdresser really often, which like, it's perfect if you do, but maybe you're not like diving. It's also something that yeah. is like, okay, like it's all right to do something different and it's all right to go out there and yeah. like to be carrying things and be exploring and being with dangerous creators. And we're all different. So there's space for all of us. And like, yeah. I like to, to empower that in, in scuba, you know, to make girls feel comfortable to, you know, be occupying another role that what society expects for them. Yeah. And something really cool that I like in Women of the Ocean too is that it ended up being when we when I muted online when people start doing the online Women of the Ocean, um, it's like, that's called the club of Women of the Ocean. A lot of girls that live in the city they wanted to have this life, but they didn't know how to do it. So it ended up being in a place sure. to encourage people to move next to the ocean. And there's girls that they decided yeah. to do that just because of the club because you listen to talk once a week and you get inspiration you're like okay she can maybe i can or girls start becoming friends and you know they they write to each other it's like what about if i move to that place like do you think i can find a job do you think so it's like a, a chain of support and i love it and that can be yeah. women's it can be you know like in in anything you want you want to encourage people i feel yeah. listen to stories can be like a very powerful way to inspire and creating change and that's why i also like write stories or do these things where we can talk with people and talk with our woman because sometimes you, yeah. the only thing you need is just somebody, you know, giving you a little, a little bit of inspiration or moving you to that place under world that will, you will never be and make you change your vision. Yeah. So I love this, the idea of changing your vision, but also making the ocean accessible. Cause a lot of people always ask the question, how do I start? And I always say, you start where you are with what you have. But now we're going to storytelling uh, and writing. 
And I think that is a powerful way to spread a message. But let's start with with your first film. You are you're a journalist. And how were you able to get to this place of making this film? Because, you know, a lot of people always think maybe you need to be a filmmaker in order to make films. How did you get around to making this film? Because, you know, you're talking about sharks and the idea of changing the way that we look at sharks, you know. And that's such an important thing because I remember my first dive with sharks in a place where I should have been scared, like they were circling the boat. Um, we It was a baited shark dive and the sharks just came up and they were circling the boat and and um, they said, jump. They didn't need to ask <laughs> me twice. I was out that boat. <laughs> and And what's interesting is a lot of people always say, weren't you scared? And I don't know why, because I should have been scared because I'd never really encountered sharks in that way. But my heart and my body and everything inside my heart said that's where I needed to be. And as I as I was on the surface of the water and thinking, you know, I need to release the air so that I can go down. I, I think I had half a freak out. But also it was just so beautiful. True. And and so, like you say, that, you know, we are taught about these sharks that charge at people that are going to eat people and then they don't. You know, and, and one of the things that I say is the most memorable, memorable thing about sharks. And I'll tell it to everybody. Sharks are gentle, but sharks also mind their own business. I have never come across an animal that minds its own business like sharks. Like they will go on like you're not there. And, and I always say as humans, we could learn something from sharks. So it's just that they are gentle. They are powerful, but they also mind their own business. And you, you get an opportunity to watch them. And watch the power that they are. And I just think it's incredible. So I, I love the idea that you're telling the story about sharks and it's important. Tell us about the process. Tell us about how you got to, to this place where you're able to share these stories. Okay, so one little thing I want to tell you also, um, adding to what you said of your description, because I agree a lot with what you said, is that something that I also love about sharks is how vulnerable they make me feel. And that feeling that only being with, you know, an ocean creator gives to me, gives me like some adrenaline and I love it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's just, it's just mm -hmm. a reminder yeah. that you're like a tiny little point in this world and, and, you know, you need to be humble and just leave your ego aside and you're just one creator more of this universe. And, and that, yeah. that I only get it when I, when I dive with sharks and I love it. So I'm, I'm very grateful with sharks for making me feel that. Mm -hmm. um, so how did I start with the documentary? It was, to be honest, like now I'm doing another documentary and I learned so much. But in that moment, the only thing I really knew to do was to write <laughs> and to write, a, you know, and to do a journalist investigation. And that's what we did. And I was... I was worried because I was diving every day and I was not seeing enough sharks underwater and I was doing maybe four times, a, four dives a day. And you know, when you dive every day, four sure. dives a day and you see like in maybe a hundred dives, you, I will only see like four sharks. I was, there's, there's something wrong. Like why is this happening here in the Caribbean when other places from the Caribbean, like Cocoa Island or, you know, other places, you see a lot of sharks while you dive. So this was in Panama and I was like, what happened with the sharks? Because the, the, you know, the captains, they would tell me like before there were so many sharks in the past. So I suspected there was, there has been like an, an overfishing, you know, because again, there's um, no law in Panama that regulates the shark fishing. There's only one law that regulates like the finning, but you know, there's nothing about the fishing. So I was like, why are we not seeing sharks? And nobody really knows what's going on. So it was, it was just more about when you want to do something and you just do it. <laughs> and maybe it was not easy yeah. at all um, because it was just a lot of desire of doing it. And that's everything. That's all we, all that took to do it. You know, we had no money and I was a journalist. I have a friend with a camera that really loved filming and I have, you know, yeah. my mentor in diving that was the one that teach me a lot uh, in the island so it was like my local friend which was really important because always to talk with fishermen and stuff you want to make them feel confident and you know yeah. I, I never wanted to do this against 
fisherman and I didn't, but to have a local there made them feel more comfortable to have a talk. So just the three of us and then a friend that was studying documentaries and wanted to edit, we were like, we're going to do this. And my brother, he studies yeah. um, music for documentaries. So I'm very, very grateful. And he helped us with all the sound. So we, we were not paid for this job and it was like really hard. And, but we were just like, okay, let's just put money today in the boat. And we go and talk to this, you know, we went to this remote island and talk to the fisherman and ask them what happened. And then we just want to go to the city because we want to see what's going on there in the fish market. And we start doing everything like that. And, and we finish it. And uh, I'm super, super, super happy of how it went. And once we finish it, you know, as a journalist, I was like, okay, I did this. And we discovered that there was an overfishing and we want to tell this story. So it doesn't happen the same in the Pacific that this, where they are hunting all the sharks right now. So we want to make sure people talk about this. So I was, you know, sending yeah. it to all these medias and we did a trailer and just talking to a lot of, you know, Instagram accounts and doing, I did like a big PR uh, work and it went really yeah. well. Like we made like, you know, 12K, um, 12,000 views in YouTube, but also like the, I think the biggest thing was like a lot of medias and news in Latin America were talking about it. Yes, it was one of the first thing in Latin America made in that style. Um, and in Panama, I think there was no other documentary about sharks made in Panama, or at least that I knew. We also had the help of Mike Bolton, that is like a very recognized filmmaker, because he was like, yeah, like I, I want to have a team in Panama, like I, I want to help. And like he gave us some footage of sharks filming. Mike, he is a shark conservationist and he works um, for Discovery and stuff. So that, was, that was also like a very yeah. good help. And we just yeah. put a lot of heart together and a lot of, you know, sure. uh, like we, we just really wanted to, to help the sharks. And I'm very happy because my big purpose was, you know, I want to do this, but tell how, why sharks are important and this like how we did, we create this bad reputation to them and it's affecting them in a way that everyone can understand yeah. it, in a way that I can show it to a local kid, in a way I can talk to the son of the fisherman, in a way I can talk with fishermen and just don't tell people like, if this is not against the fishermen, fishermen are not the enemies, but it's the problem that is yeah. happening, like we need, they need to put a plate in, you know, a food, a plate in their table. Sorry, I'm going to say that again. They need to yeah. put a plate in their table and they're not doing anything against anyone, but um, we want to, we want to teach them that a shark worth more alive than dead. And the only way is like maybe talk to them or find something to explain in a very, very easy yeah. way. So that's why I was so, um, you know, people was like, you need to do this documentary speaking in English. And I was like, no, I want to do this documentary speaking in Spanish because I really want to create a change and they don't understand English. So I'm not yeah. going to film this in their own country in a language that is not their own. And then with, Spanish subtitles like maybe some of them just didn't know how to read like I'm not gonna do that you know and like um I don't know I'm just really proud like we we just show it to the kids we show it to some schools there's like families that have seen it local kids that are like hey how are the sharks going on it's so cool when you're in there and I say hey the shark girl you know like people people actually watch it <laughs> and and that was the whole purpose yeah. of it so that is so powerful. And you've said so many important things. One, that the fishermen are not the bad people, right? And it's so important how we tell these stories that we can protect the people too. Two, you've spoken about language. Language is such a big thing when we tell these stories because, you know, I always say when you are not a first language English speaker, I know how hard it can be to hear something and then need to yes. translate it and then answer <laughs> it, right? Because even I'm not a first language English speaker and I speak a lot of English now, but there was a time where I, I had like I needed time to convert it. And so the easiest way to get through to people is to speak in a language that is spoken there, but also to make it accessible, as accessible as possible. So I want to celebrate you for, for deciding to make this film in a language that the people can recognize. And, and I, I often say when you speak to people in their own language, you allow them, there's new ownership. It's not over there, it's here. You know, I often, you know, even with my grandmother, when she watches television, 
it's so funny because then she'll also make up the parts that she doesn't understand. She makes up her own end mm. of it. And then, but when something plays in Zulu, the way that she engages in it and the whole way that the whole family engages with it is very different. So that's incredibly powerful. Would you then say that the best way to tell stories and the best way to bring change, do you think the best way to do it is through storytelling and through film? Um, uh, what? Yeah, tell I, me. I would say, and I'm not saying it's the best way because I feel we all came here in the world and we have different gifts and, and we have good, good ways of doing things and we're different people. Let's say maybe for me is the way I found and I think I can be good at it. Um, I also feel I'm good of introducing the underwater war, like as a diving instructor, you know, mm. and I think that's a very powerful mm. way to, to create a change. But also I can know how my stories mm. make people curious and they're like, I want to dive. I want to see this. I want to see that. Where do I mm. go? Where did you do? Or how did you start it? You know? Um, but I, yeah. I firmly believe that, you know, sometimes there is, let's say, let me think this in English to say properly. <laughs> uh, there is like a, <laughs> a big bridge, you know, between what you think and what people think or they know. And it's sometimes very hard to make somebody put the shoes of another person, you know, to take another perspective. Yeah. And I feel like a story, it can be an amazing bridge or a way to connect and make somebody cross that line. And in a way that is not invasive, in a way that is not aggressive. Maybe you read... You know, maybe you read a, a post and you see a post of a local kid, you know, and you put like, I met this local kid and he realized, um, you know, he went fishing with his dad and then he told his dad, like, dad, I don't want to kill the shark, uh, but his, his dad needed money. So he, and that's like, that is an amazing way of explaining why sharks are important. Just create a story just yeah. than, more than saying like, we shouldn't shark sharks, da, 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 da. you know, that can be like, uh, uh, that's not my style. I have nothing against people do that. But for me, because that's how it will work with me. I'm, I tend to respond better when people is nice and explain me things. And I feel like stories yeah. is a very nice way to make people in need, not an aggressive way to, you know, change of perspective. And, and I really enjoy doing yeah. it. So that's what I feel I came to do this work. <laughs> I, I love that very much. So what's interesting is I feel like we could talk for forever <laughs> about the ocean. We probably could. True, true. And, uh, but, but I love, I love everything that you've said. And I mean, if I have to, you know, as we're winding down to the end, I think we've, we've spoken about many important things, you know, first about, you know, finding this ocean and realizing that everything that you've always believed, you kind of had to go back and say, Yo, what does it mean for me to be this tiny <laughs> thing in this big world? And, uh, and what does it mean for women to reimagine the way to reimagine, but also redefine how society has assumed that women should look? And what does it mean to create a space where we can decide what we want to look like? And what does it mean to celebrate different bodies? But also that when you have something that is passionate in your heart, um, you find your best way, your gift um, to be able to tell that story. And what does it mean to consider where you are in telling that story and bringing justice and honor to the people, you know, with which you work. And I think, you know, we've, we've spoken about many, many powerful things and I'm so, so grateful. And if, and so I'm going to come down to, to my last question. If you had one thing that you had to share with our listeners, um, be it about ocean conservation, be it about your journey, be it about anything, what would it be? Um, I would say <laughs> you have the power to create the life that you want and it's never too late. It's never too late to go out there and explore the underwater world. And once you're going to do it, it's going to change your life. So be ready <laughs> because it's life changing. And and I also feel you shouldn't leave this world without exploring it. Because I can guarantee you that if you put a mask on and you see half of the things that I've seen and you told me you don't like it, mm, you must be a little bit crazy. Like, I don't think that's going to happen. I guarantee you you're going to fall in love just like I did. Like, I, I never met anyone. I took diving and they were like, I hate this. Never. Maybe you can say you don't want to do that all your life. But for sure, 
it helps you understand a lot of ways. But again, I want to say we all have our own ways to connect with nature. Maybe diving is not what, like, that can be not forever, but but you want to check that place because it's kind of another planet that lives yeah. inside of us and you, you don't want to leave this world without it, just, just because being curious. And then curiosity can lead you to do big things. You know, like curiosity can lead you to make big chains and... And that's kind of impressive. Like, um, I don't know. I'm very grateful for, for my path and like where curiosity took me. <laughs> I love everything that you've said. Stay curious, go explore. And you've promised everyone that um, you, they're never going to regret it. And no one ever regrets going into the sea because I, I, I say it's the funniest thing. She takes over. The ocean just takes over. You explore her once and she's like, I want to show you something. Bah, 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 and your whole life changes, which is absolutely amazing. So with that, uh, Martina, I want to thank you. I want to honor you uh, for your work. I often say I feel incredibly privileged to be able to speak to amazing people doing amazing things. And so I'm encouraged by the work that you do. I'm thankful for your existence. I'm thankful for the work that you're doing in opening up ways for women in different places to explore and find the ocean, right? Because not all of us come from a place where we live around the ocean. So celebrating your community, you know, woman of the ocean, because that place is needed for, for women to feel safe and asking the questions that say, how do I get there? Um, thank you for telling your stories in a way that honor the people too, you know, how we tell our stories is just as important. And, right. and so I honor you for that. And I thank you for that. And, and thank you for being one more woman in this space as well that is speaking about how women can redefine what the world says is normal. And, and I think that's such a powerful thing. So with all of that, I want to thank you for your work and, and to just say that we celebrate you. I celebrate you. Thank you so much. I celebrate you as well. I really, really admire your job. And I'm so happy we're having this conversation. Like, I'm just asking how we haven't spoke like this. I could speak to you forever now. <laughs> we're both so passionate and I have so much in common that I feel, I feel we'll become uh, good yeah. friends. And I hope we can work together soon and collaborate. So thank you so much. Uh, I really love your job. I really admire your job. And yeah, whatever oh. you need, you know, I'm, I'm here. <laughs> We go for this in cows. I, I love the, I love this because um, that'll be me calling you next week, selling, telling you that I'm coming to you Baja <laughs> and that we must go and have a party. Let's do it. Let's go diving with, <laughs> with everything. Like there's so many things. You should come. <laughs> Thank you so, so much. And with that, that's a close. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us. It has been an amazing hour and a bit chatting the, to this amazing human. And we'll see you next week. Ciao, ciao. Cheers. <laughs>